Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, I did want to say that today is actually the one year anniversary of the start of this channel. Uh, if you look in the about section, it'll say something about like 2017 or whatnot, but that wasn't really when I started to actually do production. Um, the actual date was December 27th of last year. We are now at one year growth. I will do a longer video talking about that in the future, uh, but for now, cool excited about that thank you guys for being a part of the journey and i'm looking forward to the channel growing and uh, you guys's growth and your uh, competition goals and and general in life as well so i wanted to get to a question that comes up to me a lot it's a lot of students who struggle with probability will say i have a tough time telling if order matters or not when they're first learning it uh, the more experienced students don't have as much difficulty with that. And really the only way to get rid of that is to solve a ton of probability questions, sometimes multiple times, so that you get used to recognizing when order matters versus when it doesn't matter. But did you know, sometimes it doesn't matter which way you do it. Sometimes you can say for yourself that order matters and a friend of yours could say, no, it doesn't. You both solve, and as long as you're both consistent all the way through the solution, you will both get the correct answer. This is not true in every case, but it's true in this problem, and I want to show you how that works. So let's get started on it. This is the 2011 AMC 10A. It was problem number 21. By the way, there's large gaps in the writing up here at the top because I thought, oh, I'll write big and nice. And then I started to realize this is a long problem. I'm going to be down here. So I started to kind of shrink it up. Yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so two counterfeit coins of equal weight are mixed with eight identical genuine coins. Okay, so we've got two counterfeit and then eight genuine, where this has eight in it. 10 total coins, okay. The weight, again, I try to process what they're telling me when I'm reading. I do not read an entire problem and then ask how I'm going to attack it. I feel like I do much better when I kind of make sense of what I read as I read it. So that's kind of my personal strategy. The weight of each of the counterfeit coins is different from the weight of each of the genuine coins. So they're not equal weights. A pair of coins is selected at random without replacement, that might be important, without replacement from the 10 coins. A second pair is selected at random without replacement from the remaining eight coins. The combined weight of the first pair is equal to the combined weight of the second pair. What is this sentence about? The combined weight equals the combined weight. This is a probability of A given that B has happened. That's what it is. And if you want to go deep into the theory and the actual formula for probability of A given B, sometimes written something like this, a given B, you can find formulas for that and you can get really formulaic, if you will, in your approach. Yeah, it's, it's helpful. You should probably know it, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'm just going to approach it as uh, this is basically a given event. We know that this happened. So we're going to exclude all of the events where this doesn't happen and only focus on this. It now asks, what is the probability that all four selected coins are genuine? Okay, so first the fundamentals. What is probability? It's number of favorable outcomes over number of possible outcomes. That's how you want to think of it. Write that in your small notebook. Okay, so number of possible outcomes, that's going to be your denominator. And many times, most of the time, it's going to be easier to find. So what would that be? What are the possible outcomes? Well, you might think it's 10 choose 2 times 8 choose 2, something like that, right? Uh, but however, that's not taking into consideration what they told us. They said the combined weight of the first pair is equal to the combined weight of the second pair. So really, there's only kind of two ways that can happen. And we're going to say that the answer we want is the number of ways to get genuine with counterfeit on the first draw of the two coins times, why times? Because of the fundamental counting principle. We're counting the number of ways an event can occur. 
And so then it's going to be times the number of ways of getting genuine counterfeit on the second draw. I've indicated that as GC2, genuine counterfeit 2. But that's not the only way you can get two of the same, uh, the same weight, combined weight of the first equal to the second. This is one way. Could we have counterfeit counterfeit with genuine genuine? The answer is no, because the counterfeit coins don't weigh the same as the genuine coins. But there is another way, and that's the way that we actually want. That is the number of ways of getting genuine genuine. Again, also times the number of ways of getting genuine and genuine on the second draw. Now, you notice we added in the middle because these are not, like they're independent. Like this is one situation plus another way for the given information to occur. These are the two ways the given thing could occur. The combined weight of the first draw equals the combined weight of the second draw. This is one of the ways that can happen. This is the other way that can happen. Okay, then what we're looking for is the probability that all four selected coins are genuine. We just want that. That's what we want. That's the numerator. That's the favorable outcomes. Okay, so we're going to say it's the number of ways to get genuine genuine times this is on the first draw times the number of ways to get genuine genuine on the second draw all right so now we come to the fateful question do we do order matters or do we do order doesn't matter let's start with order matters and we'll see what happens with our answer choice so we're going to say for om order matters if we're going to say order matters then the number of ways of getting genuine counterfeit on this first draw, what would they be? They would be eight ways to get the genuine coin times two ways to get the counterfeit coin. Uh, there's only two counterfeit coins, right? And we're saying that they're like unique, right? We can tell them apart. This would be like why order matters, right? Like G1, G2, G3, something like that. So I have eight genuine coins, right? Um, okay, but not only this, we can actually switch the order. We could have gotten counterfeit on the first draw, genuine on the second, so we have to double this, okay? Now, that's just this one part right here. We still have to get genuine and counterfeit on the second draw, but now there's one less genuine coin remaining. So now we would have seven ways for that to occur, right, to get the genuine coin because one's already gone times only one way to get the counterfeit coin because there was only two and you took one right here. Again, the order could have been switched in the second two coins. I could have had counterfeit genuine, so I have to multiply by two. Again, we're focusing on order matters. So the order of the genuine coin before the counterfeit coin is what we're talking about. Genuine counterfeit or counterfeit genuine, that's order matters. So let's say you wanted to do order matters, right? And we're gonna keep approaching it this way. And we're going to try to be consistent throughout. So if we now do the genuine genuine for both draws, that would simply be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. Again, the order matters. Permutation, if you want to do, you could do 8P4 right here. Because you're just drawing four coins in a row and they're all genuine. And plus this amount that you just wrote will transfer immediately to the numerator. So 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. By the way, never calculate anything on the test until you absolutely have to. Why? Because a lot of the time there's going to be some kind of a shortcut that you can capitalize on that means your calculations will be simpler, faster, and more efficient than somebody who calculates as they go. Okay, so just leave it written like this. Okay, so we've got 8, 7, 6. We've got an 8 here and a 7 here, but no 6s and no 5s. I got an 8 here and 7 here. Well, just imagine you're factoring out the 8 and the 7 from the denominator, and then you can cancel it with the numerator. What do we have left? Well, we have 30 over 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And there's a plus sign, 8 plus 30 from the 6 times 5. What is that? It's 30 over 38. We'll now divide by 2 to get 15 over 19. That's answer choice D. Okay, but your friend says, no, no, order doesn't matter. I'm sure of it. And so he or she does it this way. Okay, let's do order doesn't matter now. So 
For this one here, I am still going to choose for my denominator, right? This is order doesn't matter. I'm still going to choose for my denominator eight ways to choose the, the uh, genuine and the two ways to choose the counterfeit. However, what I don't have is this two multiplier right here, because if I switch the order, we don't care. Go, go, a genuine counterfeit, counterfeit genuine, same, okay? In this person's approach, right? Um, then the other two coins, the genuine and counterfeit here, you will again have seven and one. Again, we don't have this two right here. Okay, good. Now, we're gonna add the number of ways to get the genuine, genuine, and then the genuine counterfeit. This is actually going to be eight choose two. Again, we're saying order doesn't matter. Um, we can do combinations for that because that's what order doesn't matter is associated with. And after you've chosen two of the genuine coins, when you go back in to draw two more coins, there's only six genuine left and you will do six choose two. Uh, furthermore, this part here, being that it's the same as this, you're just gonna transfer it up. Eight choose two times six choose two. All right, so then what? Let's calculate. Um, you should know by now that n choose two is equal to uh, n times n minus one over two. That's a shortcut for calculating something choose two. Where did I learn that? I think I got it from Intro to Counting and Probability, the AOPS book, which is how I learned it in the first place. But maybe I didn't. Maybe I picked it up somewhere else. I don't remember, but I think it's in there. Pretty sure. Okay, so eight choose two times six choose two. Um, you're going to have eight times seven over two times six times five over two over eight times two times seven, I'm gonna ignore the one, plus, and I've got the same thing, eight times seven over two times six times five over two. Now, I know things cancel, but I'm actually not gonna make cancellations. And the reason for that is I wanna cancel the eight and seven, the eight and seven, and the eight and seven, because I think that's easier. Okay, now what? Um, I've got 30 over four. I'm gonna put it over here because I don't wanna walk to that side of the board. I've got 30 over four for my numerator. Um, and then the denominator is going to be two plus 30 over four. So uh, next up, we will simply multiply the top and the bottom by four. I don't wanna cancel here and cancel here. Just get to the, the getting rid of the denominators in the first place. So the four times the 30 over four will equal 30. It's going away. Four times two is eight. Don't forget this two needs to get that four as well. And then four times 30 over four plus 30. 30 over 30, this, this looks familiar. In fact, it did not matter whether you thought order mattered or your friend said, no, it did not. In this case, and it doesn't work in every case, Sometimes you shouldn't panic at the beginning of the probability question because you're not good at telling. Just be consistent throughout your approach and a lot of the time it will work out the exact same way. In addition, what you might do at the end of a test when you've exhausted all known problems that you know the other ones you're not gonna be able to get, perhaps you could come back to a question like this and try it in the other way and see if you can in fact get it to work both ways, whether order matters or does not matter. I hope this video really helps you guys attack that. I will probably make a whole video on this, does order matter or not in the future and add this problem to it. So maybe when you watch this, you'll see this exact same video as part of a series of four or five problems where I show how this is demonstrated in multiple ways. In addition, when you're in practice doing your older tests, be sure that you're trying to do both ways and just kind of test it. See if it will work for you. See if you can find a way to get the order matters and the order doesn't matter method to match. Um, again, I, I can't say with certainty at the top of my head that it's always going to work, but a lot of times you can. You guys have a good one. Hope you had a, a great holiday season. See you in the new year or if I film before that, I'll see you then. Have a good night.